Today we're going to be converting my E39 540 to an electric fan. These are all the parts you're going to need to add an electric fan to your E39. You're going to need some sort of electric fan. This is a small 16 inch fan. You're going to need a 40 amp relay, a 20 amp inline fuse, some sort of thermo switch. You can get these in different temperature ranges. I got one to match the new thermostat we're going to be putting in as well. Some sort of coupler to go inside the hose so you can add your thermo switch. And then various wires and connectors, but we'll get to those throughout the install. For some reason, BMW put mechanical fans in all of the E39s, including the M5. And these mechanical fans are a ticking time bomb, because what happens is over time, they're exposed to so much heat, it'll lose part of the blade and get really imbalanced and just completely catastrophically fail, taking out radiator hoses, your intake tube, all of these vacuum lines, probably your radiator, your expansion tank, a lot of stuff is going to die. I've even seen it where it's come up and it's hit your hood so hard it puts a giant dent in your hood. So instead of paying for a new one, I'm just going to go ahead and upgrade to an electric fan. Engine Masters over on the Motor 10 channel did a great episode where they compared different engine fans and how much power they actually took away from the engine. A clutch fan like the one used on the BMW when it was completely disengaged was taking up 10 to 15 horsepower across the rev range, getting worse the faster the engine spun. And one where it was completely locked up took up 30 horsepower. That is a lot of wheel horsepower that you are giving up by running this fan versus an electric fan. The draw on the alternator is going to be minimal compared to 30 horsepower. So to install this, we're going to have to get a 32 millimeter wrench on that nut there, and we're going to have to hold the water pump pulley still to take the fan off. It is reverse thread, so you'll be loosening it to the right instead of the left like normal. They do sell a specific tool for how to take the clutch fan off, but basically I just copied it for much less. You'll need a 32 millimeter wrench or an adjustable wrench. You're going to have to copy the tool here. So what this does is this holds on to the water pump for you and keeps that pulley from spinning so you can loosen the fan. What I did is I took two of the bolts out of the water pump pulley and installed these M6 studs. I just cut down two old M6 bolts. They fit through these holes here, and this holds the pulley still while I undo it with this wrench. So let's go ahead and take the fan off. So now you have a bit better view of the fan pulley. You also have a bit better view of the thermostat we'll be taking off in the next video. But I'm going to unscrew those two bolts there, and that's what my tool is going to attach to, and then I'm just going to undo that nut. So I've got the two studs installed instead of the two bolts, and you can see the tool is just going to slide in here. So it took a little wiggling, but it's on there now. So it's held in. Basically what you're going to do is see I can move it back and forth like this. So I'm going to hold it with one hand and pull the other way with the wrench, and that'll take the fan off. You can see now as I spin the fan, it's unscrewing itself. So now that the fan is out of the way, it's a little bit easier to see the front of that water pump pulley that we were using. So I just used those two studs to hold the pulley still and my wrench down there to take that nut off. So if you're interested in making this tool, I'll put some dimensions down in the description. And if you want to just go ahead and buy one like this, I'll also put a link for that as well. So I just removed the radiator shroud. It was quite easy. All I had to do was take off two connectors at each top corner of the radiator and just slide the expansion tank out of the way. There is a small control box you can see deep down here on the left. It's attached to it, it just pops off. It sat right there on that little shelf. All we have to do now is find a way to mount our fan in the center of that, and then we can drop it back in the car. Here's our fan sitting in the shroud. You can really see how an 18 inch fan would easily fit inside there. The way I plan to mount it is these six different bolts. 
all the way around the edge. These ones are going to be too short. I'm going to have to step up to one that's about a half inch longer. The way this works is there's little grooves all the way around. There's six of them. And you just take the head of the bolt. Slide it down in here and press it tight. And then you have mounts all the way around the fan. On the shroud, there's a little dip here. So I can mount the top four. But I'm going to have to make brackets for the bottom two. And I'll just use some aluminum for that. Just so I can have all six mounting points. And make sure the fan stays in place. I'm not sure if the i6 cars and the V8 cars have the same fan shroud or not. But for the V8, you could definitely run an 18 inch fan. To wire the fan in, we're going to have to get to the fuse box here. fuse box open, we're going to be tapping into these two wires. It's going to be the green and white wire for our switch 12 volt and our red wire for our battery power. The sealed off box is also where we're going to be putting our relay and fuse. I've got two wires running down the engine bay here. One of these is going to go to the thermo switch and the other one is going to go to the power on the fan. For the switch 12 volt, we're going to be using this type of splice. I like this one a lot because once I splice into the switch 12 volt with this clip, I can close it and then slide a blade connector in here and that is what's going to make our connection. And then I have to use a more traditional splice for the power because I don't have one large enough for the blade connector style. Here we have our 40 amp relay. Terminal 87, this yellow wire, is going to go to the power of our fan. This black wire on terminal 85 is going to go to grounding the relay. This white wire on 86 is going to go to our switch 12 volt. And this red wire on terminal 30 down here at the bottom, that is going to go to our 12 volt battery source. I already have our inline fuse wired in. So this is going to get spliced directly into that red wire. This is going to hook into that crimp I showed you earlier. This, I put a blade connector on here just in case I wanted to disconnect the fan for whatever reason. And then this will go to that ground that runs to our thermo switch. All our wiring is done. We have the white wire off of the relay plugged into this white and green wire back here. We have our red wire plugged into our red wire over here, our yellow wire is blade connected to the power wire going to the fan and then our black wire is plugged into our ground it's going to come all the way down here we have power for the fan and thermo switch ground wire all right so i've got everything wired in except for the thermo switch so i'm just going to test the relay to make sure everything works by grounding out the relay instead of using the thermo switch i'm just going to directly apply this to a ground source and it should turn on the fan So that's a proof of concept, the fan turns on, everything is correct, so as long as that thermo switch closes and grounds everything out, our fan will work. This is our insert, that's going to go right here in this coolant pipe, and that's going to house our thermo switch. So all I'm going to do is trace off this width right here, cut the hose, slide this on, clamp it, be able to put our thermo switch in there, our ground wire, and we'll be done. We've got the thermo switch and the housing installed on the car. The ground wire is going to go over here to the engine block. We've also got our new 88 degree C thermostat installed. There's going to be a video in that. I'll post that up here somewhere. So what's going to happen is when this reaches 200 degrees, this is going to close the circuit between the housing and the sensor itself. So this wire circuit is going to close. It's going to close our ground wire, which is going to ground out our relay and then allow the fan to turn on. All we have to do now is drop our fan and shroud back in the car, plug everything back up, and we will be ready to go on a test drive. So I've got my brackets added on here. It's the same on both sides, just adding some support to the bottom. And then on this side over here, because this is where the expansion tank sits, I had to use a rib nut so but that way I didn't have anything sticking out here. It had to be flush if a tank could sit here. 
So let's go ahead and drop it in the car. So just to look at it, you wouldn't even really be able to tell that the electric fan is in there. I'm going to go ahead and add some coolant to the coolant system. We'll back it on the driveway and bleed it. Alright, so I've got the car running now. It's a little high right now, but that'll go down as time goes by. I'm seeing bubbles start to come out. I'm keeping an eye on the temperatures with a OBD2 reader. So I just want to see if the fan comes on. I don't know if you can tell it is not on right now. But the car is only at about 115 degrees. So I'm just going to keep checking it, keep an eye on it. Just periodically squeezing the hoses. You can see it kind of helps run some water through. I want to try and squeeze all those bubbles out. I don't know if you can tell, my driveway has a slight downward angle to it. That should help with the coolant. And just a little bit, I'm going to back it down so just the tail is in the street. That'll give it an even more angle, help get some more bubbles out of a coolant system. But she's still doing good. We're getting close to where a thermostat should open. I've got the heater turned all the way up just to get everything out. We didn't lose that much coolant, but better to be safe than on the side of the road calling Uber. So now the front of the car is much higher than the back of the car. It's got a good maybe six or seven inches of tilt to it. And that should help get all that air to the front of a coolant system. All right, so the fan literally just came on. It took it up 215 degrees to come on. And now it just shut off. Apparently the fan comes on at 215 degrees and turns back off at 210. I don't know how I feel about that. I'll probably contact them and see if I can get a different switch, one that works properly. But good to know the fan will actually come on. So yeah, successful swap of an electric fan to replace a clutch fan. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button down below. Check out some other videos. And I will see you guys next week.